I'm Scott Horsburgh. Welcome to Yelling Up Steady. Today we are concentrating on hand planing and shooting. I think you will be pleasantly surprised at the wonderful, accurate results you can get from a hand plane. Some of you may think, why do we bother hand planing at all? We've got these boards that come straight from a machine. They've got a flat face, a reasonably square edge. It's good enough. Well, for some furniture, it is good enough, but for fine furniture, it really isn't. Hand planing removes all of the machine snipe and rough bits that we're left with. It removes tear out. It leaves us with beautiful flat faces and very square edges. It really doesn't need sandpaper, but if you do choose to sand, you only need to sand minimally and you will still maintain the crisp lines and faces. I have a couple of boards. I planed a face side and then using the fence on the planer, I also machined a face edge and then I re-thicknessed these. Now, it doesn't matter how much time I spent in setting the fence, there will always be some errors in these boards. If I put a straight edge up along the face side, I can see where it's touching and there's light under some areas. So it really isn't perfectly flat. And even though the face edge is very near square, I can see that it still goes like this in places. It's not quite right. Believe it or not, the hand plane is going to true these up. We really don't want any bumps in our surface. We want it to be bump free. Bumps are the enemy of the furniture maker. So what we're striving for is a very slight hollow. In a board that might be 600 mil long, the hollow might be the, the equivalent to a sheet of paper or even half a sheet of paper. It's negligible, but it's bump free. If we place a square along an edge and it sits on a bump, it can tilt. If we place it on an edge that has a slight hollow, it's not going anywhere. It's firm. Right now, I'm going to show you the very basic kit that I'm going to be using today to help us plane face sides and face edges on boards. And really, when I'm making a piece of furniture, every piece of wood that goes into the furniture is hand planed. Possibly except the handles. Small little intricate things that you really only sand. But still, the sides, if they're flat, I will shoot. So let's have a look at the basic kit that we're going to be using today. This is all that we're going to be using today. We have the hand plane with a very sharp A2 blade. We have two replacement blades here. These are the ones that we prepared and sharpened in DVD one. I have some squares, I have some steel rulers. This is what I use for a straight edge. The Starrett straight edges are very expensive. These do just fine. These are quarter sawn English oak winding sticks. And this is a shooting board, which we will use in the second part. This is a wonderful tool. This is just a brush to help clean the plane. And that is it. Hand plane, squares, straight edge, winding sticks. They're the basic tools. The shooting board we'll use in the second part and you're going to love that. Let's talk a little bit about grain direction because before we get started that's what we need to understand so that we can be planing with the grain and not against the grain. If you think of a cat if you are patting a cat and you're going the way the fur wants to go, everything's smooth and lovely. As soon as you start to go up the back of the cat the other way, it's like tear out. So when we are hand planing, we need to have a really good look at the board and determine which way the grain is running. If it's straight grained wood, it's very easy. If the grain is a little bit wavy or curly, it can become a little bit more difficult to determine the way the majority of the grain 
is running. And if it's interlocked, well, it's very difficult to determine. I have a piece of Jarrah here which has a lovely straight grain and I have already planed a face side and a face edge on this board. I'm going to zoom in and show you the face side and the face edge so you can see what I'm talking about regarding grain direction. It's actually a little bit difficult for me to show you this, but if you have a look here, you can see that the grain of the timber is running this way. So what that is saying to me is that along this top surface, I really want to be planing this way. If I go the other way, I'm going to have tear out. When we are preparing pieces of timber for furniture, invariably the face side and the face edge are the inside faces. The opposite sides of the wood are the show faces. For example, if this piece of jarra was a carcass side, the face side would be the inside face and the face edge would be the front edge. If it were this piece of hue and pine that I have here is one of eight draw sides that I'm going to be using for the sideboard that I'm making. So the face side will be the inside face of the draw and the face edge will be the downward edge. If this was the leg of a table, the face side and the face edge are the two inside faces where the joinery is cut, so they're not seen. The face side and the face edge are the datum surfaces. If we are preparing a large number of the same sized board, for example, eight draw sides, I will plane a face side and a face edge and then I will re-thickness all of these pieces to get them exactly the same. And the reason for re-thicknessing is that each piece of wood is individual. It may have a different amount of wind or twist or slightly more convex or concave than the other. Therefore, it may take more or less shavings to get it flat on the face side. So by re-thicknessing, we then make all of those boards consistent once again. Planing up a face side. This piece of wood, as all of them have, have come off my machines. They have machine ripple on them. So before I start to hollow the length and hollow the width and remove the wind, the first thing I need to do is to remove the ripple. So that is the first thing we're going to do now. When I am planing, my right arm is pretty well locked. It's my legs that are doing all of the work. My left hand is either holding onto the knob, if I'm further out here, or it's resting on the front parts of the plane here and my fingers are acting as a guide but my legs are doing all the work. If I'm planing a small board like this I'm pretty much just able to rock but if it's a longer board then you just walk as you go. Okay let's remove the ripple. So when it's just sliding along the top like that, it's taking the top edges and you can tell that it's not flat because it's missing bits here and there. Okay, I'll just go one more pass and then I think we will be
ready to go. Just want to show you that shaving because it's very thin. You could just about read through that. I'm just going to put the calipers on this just so it gives you an idea of the size of shaving that I am taking because they're not very thick at all. And this is half of one tenth. So it's a twentieth of a millimetre. That's a lot of cuts to remove one mil. Okay. So I go from side to side and I work my way in. This is the curved blade that we prepared in DVD1 and you can see why we need a very flat sole on our plane. If we don't have a flat sole, we're wasting our time. One more down the middle. Okay. I just use the brush to wipe out the plane, clean it out. This piece of jar is shimmering already. The improvement from just 15 seconds of hand planing is really remarkable. Okay, now we are ready to hollow the length, the width and remove the wind. And we're going to start with hollowing the length. Before we do anything, we need to put a straight edge on it and have a look. Now you need a good light source for this. And I have a lovely north facing window. So I'm just going to hold this up. I'm going to hold this up and I have a look so that I can see what is happening. And it touches in various spots. It's almost hollow already, but it's not flat. Now the beauty about having a very flat sole to your plane is it greatly helps you to create a very tiny hollow in a board. And as soon as that hollow gets too great, the plane will stop cutting. It also helps to use a plane that is a similar length or a bit shorter to the board. If I was planing up something the length of this workbench, I would use my number seven jointer. This board, the five and a half jack plane is perfect for. So in hollowing the length, what I'm going to do is I want to take through shavings, except I want to leave the bits at each end because I'm looking to hollow it through like that. So I'm going to start about 5 mil in from the end, go right through and lift the plane off as it's moving about 5 mil in from the back end. Because I'm using the curved blade, the cuts that I'm taking are very slightly curved. Not much, it's negligible, but they are curved. So I'm going to cover this board in pencil and it's going to help me see where I'm taking shavings. I'm going to zoom, zoom in and just concentrate on this board so you can see exactly what's happening. This process might seem quite long and drawn out to some, but believe me, once you know what you're doing and you've had practice, it takes no time at all to true up a face side and a face edge. So, I'm going to cover this board in pencil. And it will help me see where I'm taking wood. I'm going to put this pencil just up here next to the board so that it can warn me when I'm getting to the end so I know to lift off. Remember, I'm not taking wood from this end here or this end here because I'm going to hollow this through. 
Start at the left hand side and work your way in. Now remember, the blade is curved, so and I have the curve of the blade set right in the middle of the plane. So I'm going to put this center of the plane blade on the left hand edge and work in. Start inside, drop the plane on. I'm using my fingers as a guide. Look at those beautiful shavings rolling out. And just lift off. Go over to the other side and do the same. Because you're using a sharp blade, you have a lot of control over what you're doing. You want to double this cut over the previous one because of the curved blade. And you can see how I just lift it off at the end. It really is not difficult. All my legs are doing all of the work. Okay, you can see that through the body, I've removed all of the pencil line. Just like that, very quick. So already, I'm starting to hollow that length. I'm going to do one more set of through shavings, and then I'm going to put the straight edge on this and check it again. I'm just going to repeat exactly what I did a moment ago. Up the right hand edge, lift off before the end. You can see that the shavings are coming right out of the centre of the plane. One more there. Now using the straight edge, I'm just going to check this board and I fully expect to see this very near hollow in the length. And it is, as you would expect. I can see light under the whole length and it's touching at each end. So that is just what I want. Now I've got these two little step marks at each end, so I'm going to take one set of through shavings to clean this board, yep, because we don't want the steps at each end. Just going to brush that out. Feel it just bite when it hits that that edge. There you go, but it goes straight through.
When you practice this, you'll get your own technique and you'll find your own rhythm and your own way of doing it as quickly as you like. But it doesn't take long. I'm showing you length and width, but when I'm planing up a board now, I'm actually hollowing the length and the width in one hit. And then I just remove the wind. So it doesn't take long at all. Okay, so I've removed the steps at each end and that is hollow along its length. There's no tear out in this board. It's beautiful. Now we're going to hollow the width. Now in hollowing the width, it's exactly the same procedure as hollowing the length, except this time I'm going to take through shavings from end to end and I'm just going to leave the sides. But before I do anything, I'm going to have a look and see the state of this board. A good light source is an absolute must. So all I'm doing is just running the square and having a look and this board is, is pretty flat anyway. It's a draw front that I cut three months ago, all of them, and have had sitting on stringers for three months so it could settle. But when you have a look with your square, you can see where the high and low points are. And if it's well out of shape, you can mark the high points with a pencil and concentrate on them first. Just practice planing up and you will soon get the drift. Okay, so, now we're going to leave the sides. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run some pencil along these edges. In fact, I'll cover the whole board again. So I've covered the whole board in pencil. And my aim here, here is to just leave these two edge strips so that I can get a nice hollow through there. No bumps. So these are through shavings. So bearing in mind the curved blade, I'm going to run this in. Using my fingers as a guide, I can see that shaving coming up about 5 mil inside the edge and you can see the pencil is still there. That's what I want. there. I'm going to do that again. Where it's not cutting very much, it's because it's hollow. You can see that's very thin. And one more there. Okay. I'm going to hold this up to the light again. Now remember, I still have the pencil mark down these side edges, but I just want to check it and have a look.
That's lovely. So I'm happy with that. It's got a slight hollow. In fact, let's have another look at the length. Make sure we haven't messed anything up there, but I'm not expecting that we have because we took three shavings. That's good. That's good. I'm going to clean this board up now by just taking a whole set of through shavings, including off the sides. Just clean this out. Not cutting much down the centre because that's quite hollow. Wafer thin. One more. Okay. Now all that remains is to have a look at the wind. Now what wind means is twist. If we're using this as a carcass side or a draw side. We really can't have any wind or twist in the board. If it has that little bit of wind in it and we're relying on the joinery to, to pull it in and keep it straight, the whole thing is going to be under tension. We don't want that. If we can put them together as straight as possible, there's no tension in the structure, which is very important for its continued functionality as the seasons come and go and the humidity changes. The key tool in checking for wind is winding sticks. Now, winding sticks, these are just two parallel square cut boards, planed up just as we're doing here. These are out of Cortison English Oak so they're very stable. The back one has two white acrylic inlays that I've inlaid in and behind them is a board which enables me to see very clearly because it cuts out glare. Now the way you use these is you pop them at either end of the board, you sight down and if the two white pieces of acrylic disappear simultaneously, that board has no wind. If they disappear unevenly, there is wind in that board and it's telling you where it's high and where it's low. I'm going to show you this right now. Now this is the setup for winding sticks, one at each end. We're going to be sighting from this end and when those two white acrylics disappear at exactly the same time, then we know we've got a lovely flat board, slightly hollow, perfect, ready to go. Now, I'm going to show you through the camera how these disappear because there is wind in this board and we're going to remove it with the hand plane very quickly. It doesn't take long. This is very basically what we do. We squat down and we sight up with one eye closed and one eye open to have a look and see how they disappear. Okay, you can see there how this white acrylic has just disappeared, yet there's still a slither of white acrylic here. Now what that is telling me is that this side here is high and that this front side here is also high. It's a diagonal thing. This is high and this is high. 
So the winding sticks have shown us where we need to remove shavings from. So we said that this back edge here was high. So I'm going to mark, put a little H on that. And the corresponding side, the other end, front, was high. So I'm going to mark the other ones with an L for low. And I'm going to put a little line there. I am going to remove shavings from everywhere on this board except the two low points. Remember these were the high points where we were shown by the winding sticks? So these are the low points. I'm going to take a shaving right up this side and stop about 10, 5 to 10 mil in from that back edge and lift it off because I'm going to leave this, it's low. And when it comes to here, I'm going to come in 5 mil and start and then plane through. Once you become familiar with winding sticks, you'll be able to very accurately estimate by seeing the difference in height on the acrylic how many shavings you need to take to remove that wind. And the winding sticks actually exaggerate the size of that error. You can do what David Charlesworth does and pop a shim under the low edge of the winding stick to see. Okay, I'm going to leave that low point. When I leave the low points, the rest of the board needs to be planed so I don't introduce bumps where we've hollowed. So I'm going to leave this low part and come right through. Take this high part here, come right through to the end, and before I get to the end, I'm just going to lift it off. So I've still got the low mark there and I've still got the low mark here. Now the rest of this is through shavings. When I'm planing, I'm not putting too much downward pressure on the plane. I am a little bit, but not too much. You can tell when the blade is starting to get a little bit blunt too. It becomes a little bit hard work. Okay, now I've taken one shaving. Now, I actually think that's going to be enough. I think I've got it. So, now I'm going to take a set of through shavings. Which means I'm also taking these low points that I previously marked as low. Jar is quite a hard, dense timber, so it does hammer blades. This blade feels like it's getting a little bit blunt, so I'm just very quickly going to change blades. I have a couple of fresh ones here ready to go. Resist the temptation to plane too long if you feel your blade getting blunt. That's when you can get tear out. And tear out is a real bummer. It doesn't take long to sharpen blades and it certainly doesn't take long to replace them. Okay, there you can see 
These two acrylic strips are just about to disappear simultaneously. So it really only took us 30 seconds to remove the wind from this board. There you go. That board is done. It has a face side. So this board now has a face side. It's hollow through the length, it's hollow through the width, and it has no wind. I now use white chalk and I just mark a uh, face side mark leaning towards the face edge. And I just put a mark like this. This is going to be my face edge. And all that says to me is that's the way the grain's going. So I know the next time I come, when I'm taking a finishing through shaving, I don't have to check which way the grain's going. The face side mark tells me which way. And it also lets me know that this is the face side. You can see with the winding sticks that if these are a little bit out of whack, you're wasting your time. They may do more harm than good. So I just frequently check my winding sticks because they are made of wood uh, with calipers at each end to make sure they're all parallel and in good nick. The method for planing these up is exactly like the board we've just done. Now we're going to do the face edge. You will be able to see how easily you can make winding sticks as well. You, you will notice that the acrylic is a very neat fit. The acrylic's been shot to fit. That's something we do on the shooting board and I will show you that later on in this DVD. The face edge. So we have a face side that we know is wind free. So when we come to do the face edge, we're using the square off our datum surface, the face side. So if we can get this straight and flat with a very slight hollow, so there's no bumps, and square to the face side, we have no need to check for wind because it's been trued up against a datum surface. So our next job now is to true up the face edge. So the first thing we need to do is determine which way the grain is running. So if we have a look at the face side, we can see which way the grain is going. And it's running this way, which tells me I need to plane this way along the face edge. Now before I do anything, I'm going to have a look at the surface. First of all, let's check it for flatness. Up against the light again. Now that's got a, a radical hollow. That looks like it's got about a mil hollow touching at each end. So that's what we want, but it's too hollow. So we will need to rectify that we'll find that when we put the shavings on, it'll cut here and here and it won't take in the middle. Now I'm going to check it for square. And all I do is I place the, the butt of the square up against the face side and I look through. With a good light, you can see the slightest little bit of light tells you where it's high. Now from there to there, it's pretty good. And then it starts to get high on the left. I'm just going to mark that with a pencil. Still high on the left through here. Still high on the left all the way down to there and it's high on the left down to there. Now the beauty of having the curved blade in the plane is that we can move the plane across the board like that. So we know exactly where we're going to take shavings and we can take shavings either from the center, from the left or from the right hand side. So the errors that occur when we machine this up against the fence on the buzzer, we can rectify easily and quickly with a hand plane. Let's have a go. So I'm not expecting this to cut through the middle here, 
because of the hollow that we already have. It's getting closer to cutting through there. Now this piece is only 17 mil, 17 mil wide, but I'm still confident that I can balance the plane accurately enough to get this square. Any thinner, and I would freehand shoot it. I'll be showing you that later on. Almost a through shaving. There you go. Okay, that's a through shaving. So I'm going to check this again. Okay, now that straight edge still looks to have a, a little hollow, which is good. But what I would like to show you is how to get a hollow, because that's what we're striving for. So it's the same as hollowing the length on the face side. Just start inside from this end and pick it off at the other end. It's as easy as that. It's a thin shape, and before you get to the end, just pull the plane up while it's moving. That is how you get a hollow. And the shavings will become progressively thinner until it won't cut at all. It's almost not cutting now. So when you've got a hollow like that, and you've got the steps at each end, just take it through shaving to remove those steps. Okay. So we have a hollow along the length. Right, I can see light under the ruler in the center and it's touching at both ends. Now we need to make sure that it's square. So with the square and the light, I'm going to hold this up. It's handy to have a pencil. So you can mark as you go. High on the left. fractionally high all the way along the left down there still high on the left up to about here and then that looks good that's good that's good that's good so when I pop it in the vise and I'm turning actually around I've got the pencil line and it shows me where I need to take wood. From here, it's good, and from there onwards, it's high on the right. Now I want you to see this angle so you can watch me skew the plane on the, keep it flat, but take it on the side. 
This section here is square. Through here, it's high down this right hand side. So what I'm going to do is, because my blade is centered, I'm going to start in the center, and then when I get to here, because I want to take a shaving off this side, I'm going to move the plane across. And that's the beauty of having the curved blade. That will help us square it up. So, start down the center. When I get to here, I'm moving the plane across. And I'm taking the shaving down the right hand side only. Start the plane down the center. See how I can use my fingers as a fence. Move it across and take a shaving just down that right hand side. Just like that. I think I've got that pretty right. I'm just going to take one straight down the center. Oops. Very deliberate, but that's a through shaving. Didn't have that quite tight enough in the vise. Now I'm going to have a look at that piece. I'm going to just pop my face edge mark. It tells me which way the grain is going, and it comes back to the face side. Now I'm going to check this and see how accurate we have. That's very good. That is spot on. So it's beautiful and square to the face side and it's ever so slightly hollow. So this board now has a face side and a face edge. If there were four draw fronts, I would prepare four of these and then with a face side and a face edge and then I would re-thickness them all so they are exactly the same dimension. With a little bit of practice, you will be planing wood up accurately very quickly. If you wanted to finish this piece with sandpaper, the sanding required would be minimal as it's very flat and very cleanly cut with the blade. Or, as Mr. Krenoff does, you could leave it finished straight off the blade. And in certain light, you may be able to see that little effect that the hand plane has, which as Mr. Krenoff says, is the mark of the maker. We're now going to have a look at planing end grain. Planing end grain is also an important skill to learn. Say for example with this draw front, we need to have these edges very nicely cut so we're actually going to be planing these to fit into the opening of the drawer itself. So to be able to take very fine shavings off the end is very important as then we can get it to fit gradually. On planing the end grain of this particular draw front, I'm going to actually shoot the end grain on this, so I'm going to show you that later. But what I am going to show you now is the basic use of the block plane on end grain like something like this, a draw side. This is hue and pine, it's a lot easier to cut than this very dense jarrah. When planing end grain, the main tool is this little block plane. However, I find that more often than not, when I want to cut end grain cleanly, I am shooting it. And in fact, when I am preparing draw sides like this, I would definitely shoot this end grain. I will show you that as well. But I want to show you the use of the block plane because it's also very easy to get it right with the block plane. I have this piece of hewn pine in the vise so that I can use the block plane to come and take shavings straight off the end grain like this. But before I start, there's something I want to show you. 
If I keep it with very crisp, straight edges, when I come to plane off the end here, there's a very real chance that I'm going to splinter these last edges. So I want to show you a way that you can prevent that from happening. You can see that what I have done here is I've just taken a very small chamfer off this back edge. Now what that means is that when I come off the end of the top here, these fibres here are supported because of this cut through. It sometimes can be quite difficult to keep the block plane balanced flat on something so small. That's why shooting is so handy. But I just use my thumb on the top button there, pop it on, skew the plane a little bit. And you can see that it's just come straight off that edge cleanly. Almost getting a reasonable shaving. So it's cutting it nice and cleanly. I have no tear out of the fibres on the end grain here, which is good. On the end there, I mean. The thing that I may have trouble with is just making sure that it's square. But that's where shooting comes in. That is the main technique of planing end grain. If you didn't want to put this little bevel at the end to protect your precious edge, all you need to do is come in halfway from this side and then turn around and bring the block plane in from the other end. You can't get any tear out on end grain because the fibres are running vertically and you're just cutting them off clean. So you can come from this direction or from this direction. Whilst I have the block plane here, I want to show you my favourite way of using this tool. And it is to take fine bevels off edges like this and also to shape. It's a fantastic tool for this because you can balance the plane and keep it in exactly the same line and take very accurate, crisp bevels. If you wanted to curve this end as well, you can do that and the results are spectacular. All you do is pop it on the end, skew it slightly and just run it through right the way like that and don't know if you can see that, but that is the tiniest little curly shaving like Goldilocks's hair that comes out of the plane. They get bigger as the bevel increases. So I've just put a very tiny bevel on that. So it's, it's a better result than sandpaper because it's perfect. Just pop it on. Keep that same line coming through. It's fantastic. I'll pop it on one, do one more for you. The results are just superb. If you've ever wondered how furniture makers can get such a crisp, accurate bevel or shape, it's using the block plane. Just skew the plane slightly. You can use your fingers as a fence and that will enable you to keep the same angle. And you can see that beautiful shaving coming out the back end. And your bevel result is spot on.
Fantastic. We now come to the use of shooting boards. This is my well-worn shooting board. This one I made in the workshop of David Charlesworth in 1995. So it's had a fair amount of use. The base piece is 18mm MDF and this piece here is also 18mm MDF which is just glued on to the base. This is the runway down each side for the plane to run on its edge. On the back side down the underside here is the hook screwed on and the same on the reverse side of the top end is another hook and this here is a removable mitre attachment. The shooting board just sits on your workbench and the hook sits it up nicely against the front edge. The mitre attachment can just come out and slot back in and the whole idea behind the use of the shooting board is using your plane on its side and running it up against the edge so that you can shoot the sides. When making the shooting board I have tried to get this back plate here as square to the side as I possibly could but if it's slightly out it doesn't matter because the beauty of the shooting board is that the piece of wood is very easily adjustable. The action of shooting is to hold your plane nice and steady on the side, don't rock the plane, try not to tilt it from side to side, run it very smoothly on its base and we're pushing through like this. Now when you first make your shooting board, this area of the blade down here will just take a couple of shavings off the top surface of this plate here and of this end board here. That's referred to as bedding the shooting board in. Once it's bedded in, it's ready to go. Now the key to accurate shooting is not to rock the sole of the plane. You want it to stay as it is. Now, it's very easy to keep it steady and it's actually quite difficult to rock because it doesn't want to rock. When you're shooting, you need to have a reasonable amount of momentum to ensure that you get right through. You don't want to get halfway through a cut and have the plane grinding to a halt and then have to try and force it through. Have a reasonable amount of momentum so you can get it straight through. This is one of eight draw sides as I've mentioned previously. I want a nice square end to this board. It has a face side and a face edge and now I want it to be nice and crisply cut along the end. I have marked out with a square and a marking knife right the way around all four sides. Marking out is something I'm going to cover in the next DVD. When I'm shooting I want to make sure that I shoot right up to the line and that I'm hitting the line and cleaning it with one cut right through. If I haven't got this back fence square to the side here then when I am shooting I won't be able to get this square. I'm very close but I might be slightly out. So some paper shims will enable me to rectify any small error that I see as I'm creeping up to this line. I can pop a shim in there and move the board out slightly that way to rectify any small error or I can pop it up this end to rectify an error the other way. That's a wonderful thing about the shooting board is errors are very easily rectified. I want to just show you something quickly on the shooting board. If I turn around and I show you like this, you can see along here where this top edge has been cut and so has parts of the end of this fence. 
that is where the shooting board has been bedded in. Along this bottom edge remains uncut because there is no blade down at the base of the plane. So when you are taking the first cuts along the end grain and you have a through shaving, have a look to see how evenly it is approaching the knife line. And if it's approaching evenly, no adjustments are necessary. If it's not, you may need to pop some shims in. Using the lateral adjuster on the plane, I have adjusted it so that I am taking shavings along the bottom third of the plane. Now I'm ready to start shooting. So the procedure with shooting is hold the plane steady, don't allow it to tilt. Push the board up against the fence and then into the plane. Come back and push it through. You could hear that I wasn't taking any shaving from the front, only at the back. So we'll try again. That one was slightly longer, so the cut is coming further up towards here. If you're taking a reasonable size shaving, you will, need, you will hear the board click back up to the sole of the plane when you're moving it in for the next shaving. And that click is just the depth of cut, basically. Reasonable speed, that's it. You can have a look and see how evenly you are approaching the knife line. And I can see that I'm just about to the knife line there, but I'm not quite to it here. So what I really want to do is, I'm going to exaggerate to show you, is tilt it like this. So I'm going to put a shim in there. Push it up. And you could see that that started to cut just about right from the start here. I have hit the knife line and I've hit it all the way around and it's a beautiful, beautiful cut. So I'm very happy with that. Always have your face edge up against the fence. Some makers would always advocate having the face side down. I'm not too concerned about that. I really don't think that you need to be ambidextrous when you shoot. As long as you have your face edge up against here, you're fine. When you want to do the other side, you can just tilt the board over like that. I'm going to zoom in to show you the, the resultant cut on this end grain because it's very, very sweet and it's a wonderful result. So that is how you cut end grain on the shooting board. Now for, for shorter draw sides, if this was half the length, was a small draw, I could also shoot the long grain simply by doing exactly the same technique and popping the end grain up against the fence. You can see how beautiful that whole end grain cut is. If I put a square on that, it's perfectly square. If you find that the edge that is up against the fence has a little bit of, you could almost refer to it as tear out on that end grain, just pop a slight bevel on it. Another way to also avoid that if you don't want to put a bevel on it is shoot your end grain and then leave a little bit of planing to do along the edge and you will lose that as well. These are some end grain shavings off, of, off a piece of Himalayan cedar. That's quite amazing, isn't it? It's an end grain shaving that has been held together right throughout its length. This is this piece of Himalayan cedar. It's quite short, 
but I just wanted to show you if I was making something very small, uh, the display cabinet that I recently made, the drawer bottoms were made of celery top pine from Tasmania and I needed to join two boards to create each base and I actually shot those edges on the shooting board. So it's the end grain that goes up against the fence and you can shoot the entire length. You get lovely long shavings that just roll out like that. You get a perfectly square edge. Beautifully cut. If I wanted to cut a mitre, say for example for mitered frames, I just pop the mitre guide in and the piece of wood just slides face edge up against the mitered edge and you can shoot that mitre. And then they're all absolutely perfectly cut. This is something much larger. This is the draw front out of this beautiful curly jarrah with a magnificent colour. As I said earlier, I really was not comfortable using the block plane on the jarrah in the vise. I would much prefer to shoot it. So I just have placed this on the shooting board. I haven't marked this out because I'm actually not ready to make these drawers just yet and I also want to, to film that process for you. But it's exactly the same procedure. I would have a knife line along this edge that I'm shooting and I can watch the cuts approach that line and adjust this in the shooting board to help me clean that line with one cut. Now, I haven't got the shooting board clamped. I use my torso pressure to squeeze down on it and with Jarrah, this is a board that's about 18mm thick and its width is, let me tell you, 146 so it's quite long. Now this is a board that you could very easily get stuck halfway through without having enough momentum to get you a clean cut. So I pop it up against the fence push it into the plane and I'm ready to go. I hold that firmly and I drive through keeping downward pressure I get clean cuts. Have a look at that. Have a look at the cleanness of the cut along the end grain of that jarrah. It's magnificent. These are the shavings. They are through end grain shavings of Jarrah. These would be less than 1 20th of a mil thick. This draw side is only 8 mil thick and it's a bit long for me to shoot an edge in my shooting board. It's also a bit too thin for me to balance the plane on this way and have it in the vise. I may just tilt the plane or not get it quite square. With thinner boards like this, there's a technique that we can use called freehand shooting. And all I've done is using the sliding tool well, I've popped a piece of 18mm MDF on the workbench and I've popped the piece of hue and pine down onto the MDF with the face edge coming out towards me, the edge I want to clean up. I have the board, the hue and pine protruding about 5mm out from this MDF board and it's just so that it lifts the piece of pine off the workbench so I can cut it cleanly with the hand plane. It's exactly the same procedure as if I was planing the face edge on the thicker draw front material that I demonstrated earlier. I'm going to take stop shavings. I'm going to start 5mm in from this end, plane right through 
and lift the plane off about 5mm from this end so that I create a very slight hollow. Once I have that hollow, I'm going to take one or two through shavings and then I will have a lovely face edge on my first drawer side. Let's do it. This is a really easy thing to do because all you really have to concentrate on doing is not tilting the plane, but the plane doesn't want to tilt, it just wants to sit there on the bench. All you have to do is drive it. So, leaning over, you can start about 5mm in, and we're going to take some hollowing shavings. Have a look, just as I get to the end, I'm going to pick it off. I'm going to take another one of those. And we will find that very soon the plane won't cut. In fact, I'm going to leave it there. Now, just to let you know, the size of the shaving that I am taking in the calipers, that is 0.3 of one tenth. So if it was 0.5, it would be one twentieth of a mil. It's 0.3 of one tenth of a millimeter. It's a very thin shaving, but look how well it holds together. It's amazing wood here in pine. So we've hollowed it. You can put a straight edge just to make sure and I can see that it's touching at both ends and there's ever so slightly a hollow in that board which is just what we want. Now it's really only one or two through shavings. We'll take one more. And there it is, just freehand planar. It's perfectly square, as quickly and as easily as that. I would now like to talk to you about shooting veneers. The sideboard that I'm currently making has a lot of veneered panels. The two panels that I have on the bench here are the two end frames. They have been veneered on both sides, as is standard practice, and the veneers have been book matched. The inside is Australian white birch and the outside is Western Australian jarrah. Now the seams down the centre of these veneered panels is invisible. You can't see it. And I'm going to show you how you can shoot the long grain of veneers to get a perfect fit so that when you tape them together this one I'm yet to clean up, it still has remnants of the veneer tape on it. When you tape them together, the join is invisible and the result is immaculate. To do that, it's quite interesting. These are two sleeves of Australian white birch, which I am going to book match, so join like that, and they are going to be veneered onto one side of an interior panel. The other side is a mixture of Jarrah and the Australian white birch. So they're going to be joined like that, so it's a lovely book match. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold these together like that. Now this is the edge that I'm going to shoot. And as I'm going to show you shortly on my whiteboard, when I'm shooting these, it doesn't matter if my plane cuts these vertically or at an angle. Whichever angle they're cut at, when I open them out to join them, as long as I've got a slight hollow, the result will be a perfect fit.
These are the two sleeves together as I just showed you. And this is the long grain edge that I'm going to be shooting. Once I've shot them, this sleeve will fold out like a book and lay on the same plane and then they will butt up and join. If I cut them perfectly square, I haven't got a problem. But what happens if the plane is on a slight angle or the blade is on an angle and the cut is actually on an angle like that? Well, if the cut is accidentally done on, a, on an angle like that, when I fold them out, it doesn't matter because they will still mate together perfectly. So that makes shooting veneers a very easy thing to do and it greatly helps you to get the perfect fit because you don't have to have square edges. Remember, these veneers here that I'm going to be shooting are commercial veneers at 0.6mm thick. The veneers are going to be glued together, taped together just like that so I get a lovely book match. So they are folding in half like that. This is the edge that I'm going to shoot. I have already cut these edges along a straight edge using a veneer saw because really I, I do want to minimise the amount of planing. I don't want to have to tackle these when they're well out of alignment because it could take quite a while. All I'm going to do is just make sure that the edges line up like that and now I'm going to show you how to shoot these. This is the very basic setup right here. I have the book matched veneers clamped between two sturdy boards of Jarrah and the edge is protruding out no more than two or three mil. The reason being is that the veneer is very thin and it needs to be supported. If I have it protruding out 10 mil, it can bend up and down. This will hold it nice and firm and steady and enable me to run the plane along this edge on the bench and shoot the veneer. The procedure is exactly the same. We are going to be taking stop hollowing shavings. And once we have a slight hollow and both of the edges have been cut, then I will take a couple of through clean up shavings and it will be ready to be taped and glued. Let's do it. So I'm going to start 5 mil on the inside and just very carefully run the plane along until I get to within 5 or 10 mil of the end and take it off. And I'm going to keep doing this until I am cutting cleanly on both veneers. If you think it's going to take you quite a while, because you're cutting such thin pieces, you can wind your blade out a little bit and take a shaving that is a little bit thicker. You can watch the shavings as they come out of the plane and you can also scan down and see how you are cutting along the edge. Shavings look really good. It's a lovely cut. I had a fair bit to remove, so I've taken a couple of hollowing shavings and then some through shavings because otherwise I won't be able to continue cutting. And now I'm just taking hollowing shavings again. I'm going to put the straight edge on this and I'm going to check it. These are about 760 mil long, these pieces.
that's nice. I'm going to take a couple of through shavings now. And then we will be done. Shavings are rolling out very nicely. In this sideboard, I have also hand cut some veneers at 2.4 mil thick for the doors out of a very special piece of jarrah that I had. That's done. This is the edge that I've cut, so I'm just going to be very careful because I don't want to damage it. They're quite fragile. I'll pop it out. Now I can pop this together temporarily like that and just see that the join will be perfect. Now my procedure would be to turn this over, tape the back side, which is the, the side that gets glued, turn it back over and tape the show face, make sure that the joins are absolutely perfect, which they are, and then remove the tape from the glue side and glue it down but it's a perfect fit and the results are really amazing it's difficult for me to really show you without having taped that and glued it together but this is the result that you will get a seamless fit a beautiful join invisible to the eye and a wonderful book match it's a great technique and it's very easy and you would have noticed that with what we've been doing today, the technique for planing up is the same no matter what you're doing, whether you're freehand shooting, shooting veneer, shooting on the shooting board, or just hand planing on the vise or the bench. It's all about hollowing shavings to remove bumps and then through shavings to remove those steps and leave you with a perfectly straight square edge with a very slight hollow. The final thing that I want to discuss with you today is the intricate aspects of furniture making. Small cabinet hardware like door catches, door stops, stops and lifters, white plastic acrylic for winding sticks. On fine work you will notice that the makers get these items to fit into the piece absolutely perfectly. There are no gaps and you can look at it and think how on earth have they got that to fit so sweetly. Well it's very easy and it's all about shooting to fit. When you have made your small hardware items which will be the topic of a DVD in the future because they're not difficult to make and gee they add so much to a piece of furniture. These, these two here are little African blackwood door catches. This is a door catch out of South African leadwood and this is a door stop and lifter out of South African leadwood. These two are for the sideboard I'm making at the moment. Now the fit that I have on these, I have already fitted these into the, to the carcass, is immaculate. Now when I made these, I made them, cut them very carefully to a slightly oversized dimension and then I shot the edges and got them nice and square. I then marked these out very carefully onto the carcass as to exactly where they were going. Now when I'm marking these out, I bear in mind that if I cut to that line, I may not have this fitting perfectly. So when I cut the housing to hold this piece, I cut inside the line by maybe half a mil all the way around. That then enables me to pop this little piece on the shooting board, take a very fine shaving and shoot it to fit gradually. 
until it just drops in and it is the perfect fit. What a wonderful technique and it's so easy. That is how I have shot the acrylic to fit so neatly on these winding sticks. There are no gaps around the fit of the white acrylic into the winding stick. And all I, all I have done is cut this little piece of white acrylic oversize. And then I have cut the housing and shot the acrylic to fit, gradually taking shavings of maybe less than a twentieth of a millimetre off the sides and edges until I get that perfect fit. It can even go in then oversize at the top and then you plane it down to fit perfectly along the top edge as well. The procedure is exactly the same when shooting small items. Make sure that the blade is set using your lateral adjuster to cut the piece that you want. Make sure you're going with the grain, pop it in, up against the back fence and up to the side of your plane, hold it firmly and shoot the edge. It's a great way to clean up the sides so you get them crisp and perfect and you are left with very crisp edges. If you sanded them to fit there is always a tendency that you might roll an edge or not get a perfect square cut. With shooting there is no doubt about the result. I sincerely hope that this DVD has been beneficial for you. Fine furniture making is not as difficult as you would think. It's all about accurate good tools, sharp blades and techniques. The tools we use make our job very easy and as you can see with what we've done today the techniques and the procedures are not difficult. It's very rewarding and a lot of fun. If you have any questions on what we've covered today you can go to my website and send me an email and I will answer your questions. Bye for now.